Today we're going to talk about um, doing uh, collision problems, in particular looking at um, elastic versus inelastic versus perfectly inelastic collisions. Uh, and hopefully this will be a, just a quick tutorial to kind of help you um, get those things straight. So when two things collide together, um, we want to be able to do some physics on them. That's the whole idea. Um, to do that, we need to know some of this stuff. The great thing is, um, in any collision, uh, any collision at all, regardless of which one of these categories it's, it fits in, we can say that the momentum is conserved. So in all these cases, momentum initial is equal to the momentum final. Um, okay, momentum initial is equal to the momentum final. Momentum initial is equal to momentum final. That's just true for any collision, uh, basically as long as it's not, let's say, a collision with the Earth, which of course is very big and um, is hard to measure the actual final velocity. But basically, other than that, um, anytime you have a collision, um, momentum is always going to be conserved. It's a fundamental of nature. Momentum is conserved. Uh, that's just how the world works. Um, Elastic is a special case. This is a special case where things collide in a way where they actually conserve energy. And what it means when you have an elastic uh, collision is that no energy has been lost to heat. Okay, so there's been no, in the collision, there's been no uh, heat loss, so the, the things haven't gotten warmer. You haven't um, created any sound, so a sound actually is, is a way of carrying away um, elastic energy or, or, or uh, is a way of carrying away energy, so uh, things that make sound aren't technically elastic. Um, and so, but in any case, when you have what's called an elastic collision, uh, that just means that the kinetic energy at the beginning is equal to the kinetic energy at the end. And in most cases, um, uh, if you're doing an actual physics problem, it'll tell you that energy is conserved where that's an elastic collision. Um, there'll be some special examples that we'll talk about later where you kind of know that it's uh, that this is true. But if it doesn't tell you um, that uh, kinetic energy is conserved or that, uh, that it's been an elastic collision, chances are it's not an elastic collision. Okay, well, let's go to perfectly inelastic. Uh, well, what does perfectly inelastic mean? Perfectly inelastic is a special collision where after the things collide, they stay together and keep moving at the same speed as each other. Um, so if I have, let's say, these two things, if some, let's say I put tape in between them, if for some reason afterwards they both go at the same speed, then that's a perfectly inelastic collision. Again, the important thing is that the two things move at the same speed and are stuck together afterwards. Um, well, why is that useful? Well, if we look at our equations, um, so uh, what does this break down if we actually write this? So M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial is equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V final uh, V2 final. This is just our normal momentum equation. Um, the thing that's special about perfectly inelastic is if they're stuck together, then V1 final and V2 final are the same. And so we can just call that, and we'll just get rid of the 1, and just call that V final. And then we can write this as M1 V final plus M2 V final. And that can just be written as M1 plus M2 times V final. Okay, and that's what's special about perfectly inelastic is that you can write down this equation. That's the only thing. That's the only thing that's special about it. If you're inelastic, if you're in the middle of it, they don't stick together and kinetic energy isn't conserved, they're inelastic. Um, that's just basically everything else. Okay, so how can we see this in the real world? In the real world, all right, real world. In this case, you can ask one question. Are they stuck together? If the answer is yes, it's perfectly inelastic. If the answer is no, it is not perfectly inelastic. That's perfectly inelastic. Okay, straightforward enough. For elastic, um, to the question, uh, is it an elastic collision? Most of the time, the answer is going to be no. So there are a couple of special cases when when uh, when atomic particles, so atomic particles collide. So this is um, this is kind of a a special case, when atomic particles collide, they often do an elastic collision. Um, other than that, basically nothing is elastic. Um, that's the only kind of case where you don't lose stuff to, to, to thermal energy. Now, there is a special case where things are almost elastic. Um, this is uh, mainly just uh, pool balls all right, or billiard balls. When billiard balls collide, 
um, they are hard enough and they're elastic enough. They're kind of bouncy enough uh, that they um, that they're pretty close to being elastic. They don't lose a ton of energy. Um, uh, another thing would be like two golf balls running into each other probably be that way. And so in that case, you get that this um, that this is true. Everything else is inelastic, and that's largely what's going to be true. And then you're just going to have to use a momentum equation and go from there. Thank you. Hope that was useful, and um, I'll see you in class.